We're here at the EA Play for Free headquarters in Stockholm with David. Uh, and I must say that EA have really been very successful in transitioning as a publisher into the free to play market. Uh, what kind of what kind of things have you looked at, and what what how how have you been able to be successful? I think the important thing here is to always look at the players and what they want. That's really the uh, I think the es essence of of being uh, or creating success. And in our case, uh, that means uh, making uh, consumer tests even before we launch our games, but also once the games are out, uh, to listen to the community and what they want. I think I think uh, some some developers are uh, voicing concerns that. Uh, free-to-play products and, and products that are freemium or whatever you like to call them, uh, sort of um, they sacrifice quality over uh, f to get that low price point, that, that sort of low end point of entry. Uh, what's your philosophy in this and, and how do you feel that you can overcome this stigma, if you will? Yeah, so uh, I agree. Uh, uh, we've been facing that uh, to a lesser extent uh, recently, though, I would say. And I think part of, of that is that we're actually we're able to prove that our games are premium games. I, if you look at uh, a game like Need for Speed World or Battlefield Play for Free, for instance, it's uh, pretty darn good graphics and uh, it's a great g uh, gaming experience. So uh, I think also going forward we, c we will continue to show that the games that we publish are actually pre premium games. So if you look at, at the number of studios that EA employ now in the f in the play for free how many how many people are working on games that are play for free and, and sort of how much has it grown over the last couple of years so it continues to grow and i would say you know together with what we're doing on publishing and and s other support uh, functions and and the studios and so on we're close to 200 people um, and it will continue to grow. Uh, this is part of EA's digital, digital transformation and uh, that's something that we will, it's a strategic move for an EA. So uh, we're going to con continue to put a lot of emphasis on it. So, uh, so how much communication is there between uh, EA proper and, and play for free in terms of like, uh, because I think early on uh, when when this this sort of model started to come about, it was often that okay, this is this is a free game, and we we have the the, the full game that you're going to buy in, in a store for sixty dollars or something like that, and they have to work together. How much of that is still there, and and sort of how much do you try to fit products next to other products? Uh, I think it's a very important part of what EA does, actually being able to coordinate brands and IPs across different markets, ac across different platforms. So there's a lot of, of that going on. And uh, yeah, Command and Conquer is, is an obvious exam example of that. Yes, so the Command and Conquer Tiberium Alliances is an, a title that we're extremely excited about. And uh, it's a great cooperation between different parts of, of, uh, of the company. Mm. So, um, uh, speaking of that, who is the consumer? Uh, have you, you, you must have a lot of metrics going on. And sort of what, what part of, of the world is, is free to play king? And, and is there anywhere where, where it's struggling to, to get a hold of the market? Well, I, I'm very fortunate to, to say that we do have a couple of strong markets and uh, obviously it's Europe and, and uh, North America, but uh, we're not really struggling in any market. We rather see potential. Uh, one of the potentials we see is, for instance, in Russia. Uh, we're also seeing through uh, either doing it directly or through partners in uh, South America. So we're seeing a lot of potential right now. So one thing that you, you mentioned was the move from just microtransactions to actually larger transactions. And you, you mentioned a car in, in Need for Speed World as an example of that. And, and sort of uh, figuring out that uh, sort of where do you see the value of a $100 car in a, in a game when you can buy a couple of full games with <laughs> as many cars as you want? in those games. Yeah, and I think that's what, what, what it is really about. It's actually not moving from microtransactions to larger transactions. It's increasing the range of what kind of items you can buy and how they are priced. So the, the example you mentioned right now, the Koenigsegg car that, that costs almost $100 is the most expensive virtual item we have sold so far. But to me that proves that there is a market for those items as well, but there's also going to be a, 
a great importance of offering a car or a gun or whatever it is, an in-game item that only costs a few cents or a few dollars. That range might increase though, and it's going to increase, I think. How, how is the, uh, the communication set up between the different studios? You, you're starting to try and merge uh, currencies now and, and that are going to run across the games. And, and uh, is that also going to go across like technology and things like that, that more games will be cross-platform, will be available on Mac and so on and so forth? Yes, one important part of what, what I've been tasked with to do here within Play for, Play for Free and EA is to coordinate uh, and make sure that we leverage the knowledge that we're building up in each and every studio. Um, so. That's one, one thing that, that I'm, I'm putting a lot of attention to. Uh, and to, to your question also, for technology, that's another thing that we're looking into. If we can get on the, uh, on the same technology and create uh, economies of scale through that, we're definitely going to do that. Uh, and as we add on more games into our portfolio, that comes of becomes of course increasingly important. So uh, this market is still kind of young and fresh. How do you see it evolve over, the, say, the next five or ten years? So I see this market grow and uh, it's going to continue to grow rapidly uh, as it's currently doing. Uh, if you look at the market today, it's, it's uh, already a market value, a really high market value on it. And um, I think it might not be, it's probably not going to be the only way, definitely not. There's going to be room for different kinds of business models within, within gaming. Um, but it's going to in continue to increase in importance. And do you see, do you see any end date for, for the games that you're offering now? And, and sort of what point do you sort of cut the service? I, I think, you know, in, in theory, there's always an, an end date. On, we haven't seen that on any of our games yet. Though. So we've got five games up and running. Uh, the, uh, the oldest game in our portfolio was launched uh, back in, in May 2009. It's still up and running, we're still getting new players. Um, so we haven't seen any of our games being close to, to, to being shut down or sunset yet. But it's the day that people stop buying stuff, perhaps. <laughs> that will probably be the day, yes. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you very much.